Hello everybody. Welcome to episode 5 of the Warped Minds of Warp Tour. I feel like I failed to make this clear, so I just want to establish this now. The Warped Minds of Warp Tour series is not just about people who have allegations of a sexual nature. I definitely dropped the ball on making this clear, but we're going to be talking about all types of people. In fact, this episode that you're watching right now was originally supposed to be about somebody else who has no allegations of that type. But I actually ended up deciding on pushing that episode back to next week, because I got some very interesting information when I was reached out to by an anonymous individual about the subject of today's video. And you're going to find out exactly what we talked about right now. You know, we've all made terrible choices in our lives. Bruh. And as a content creator, it's my responsibility to be transparent and honest with my community, always. So I've decided I'll share some of my mistakes with all of you. One of my biggest mistakes was visiting r slash sounding. Or who could forget about the time I failed to cherish the woman that I loved. And worst of all, my emo haircut. Whenever I went to school, they'd always say mean shit like bitch and retard and f with a bum ass haircut. And worst of all, Nate, you will never be ballin'. I had to do something. I mean, they were right. I wasn't ballin', but they were wrong. I will be ballin'. Enough of this emo shit. Black veil brides, more like crap filled brides. Asking Alexandria, more like asking poopy. I need a new metalcore band, a cool one. But what's cool? Rapping, R&B vocals, turntables, black people. There's no way a band like that exists, right? Wrong, actually, because the band Issues was formed in Atlanta, Georgia in 2012. Issues has a pretty strange history, essentially just being a spin-off band of a previously formed band called Woo Is Me. It's a complicated story that I can't get into full detail about, but essentially the cliff notes are is that Tyler Carter, the lead singer of the band, just didn't get along with some of the members and left without warning. In fact, the band didn't even know that he left until Alternative Press posted an article about him leaving. Which, by the way, yes, that does mean that Tyler Carter literally went to a news publication to tell them about him leaving the band before he told the actual band. A little while later, the other vocalist, Michael Bond, as well as Corey and Ben Ferris, would also leave the band. And apparently, all fingers were pointed at the drummer of the band, Austin Thornton. It is much more complicated than this, I'm sure. I just can't get into all the details. They've traded a few shots at each other, both in interviews and in songs, but the finer details are inconsequential to the video. But eventually, Issues was formed by the former members. Michael Bond, Corey Ferris, Ben Ferris, and Tyler Carter, who is the subject of today's video and the band's lead singer. I think anyone Anyone who's listened to metalcore as long as I have knows that, you know, there's only so many bands that you can listen to and some are going to slip through the cracks. A few other bands I slept on were like Moths to Flames and The Devil Wears Prada. Yes, I know Man Man Atrocities Beyond My Worst Comprehension. And Issues was another one of them and it's kind of crazy because in an era full of dropsy, breakdown filled songs and Asking Alexandria clones, Issues was really doing their own thing. Bouncy riffs, R&B vocals, turntables, and I mean Jesus Christ, Tyler Carter himself is one of the most talented singers I've ever heard in that scene. He's probably second to Johnny Craig. It's really disappointing that I slept on them, to be honest, because I was very aware of who they were. I just never got around to listening to them. I mean, they even played Warp Tour four times in 2013, 2014, 2016, and 2018. And it wasn't until I started doing research for this video about a month ago, where I looked at their Twitter and saw in their bio, they described themselves as a gent boy band, which if you know me, that tickled my fancy. And Jesus Christ, their latest album, Beautiful Oblivion, is so fucking good. I can't believe I've been sleeping on this band for so long. But it wasn't until a little less than a year later after that album came out that the entire band's identity would begin to crumble. And at the center of it all was Tyler Carter. The first allegations made towards Tyler seem to have been thoroughly scrubbed from the internet, which is suspicious, but luckily they're not completely erased. This tweet was posted on August 31st, 2020, the 10-year anniversary of Woe Is Me's debut album, Numbers. However, the user of this tweet is still unknown. Happy 10-year anniversary to Numbers. That was a crazy time in my life because I made so many new friends and officially got a by Tyler Carter when I was 14 years old. That doesn't even include all the and constantly asking me for nuts for the entirety of our quote unquote friendship while I was underage. Another Twitter user would respond to these allegations as well, recounting a similar story. These allegations are sadly true. Tyler added me on Snapchat when I was about 14 or 15 and would talk about how cute I was and how soon after would ask me for nuts. He knew I was underage, and thank God I was smart enough to never send him anything, but I believe it 100%. From what I remember about these two allegations is that both of the individuals are young men, not young girls. In fact, I'm actually 99% sure that I do know 
who broke the initial allegations, but I can't speak on them for two main reasons. Number one, I can't really confirm with certainty, so it would be kind of weird to bring someone up who wasn't even responsible for him. Number two, I'm pretty sure that this person has actually tried to retain anonymity after coming out, so I'm going to respect that. But if my intuition is correct, this is not just some random person. Like, I would be able to confirm that this person actually did know Tyler. As for the second allegations, I mean, who's to say? I'm not sure who it was, but considering the circumstantial evidence that we have now, as well as that we'll be learning about later, it, it seems pretty reasonable. And I wouldn't be surprised if the allegations were true. Also, there have been other allegations against Tyler that have become public since then, but in the moment, these were like kind of the two main ones. Issues would then release a statement on September 1st, 2020. Recently, we have become aware of allegations against Tyler Carter of and sexual misconduct. We, Josh, Sky, and AJ, will no longer be working with Tyler. We believe survivors. This statement is very concise and to the point, which is telling. It's very clear that they are just not having it with Tyler. I mean, Tyler hadn't even responded at this point. They just, they just cut him out immediately, which does not look good. And something that I've mentioned in this series is that if there's an individual in a band that has a pattern of abuse, um, it's very likely that the other members of the band probably know about it but there's a perspective to that that i don't think i've really touched on well it's that when you're working within a culture where tons of people are engaging in this type of behavior it's really hard to come out about it number one because calling out somebody within your own band is super bad like that just looks really bad for you it hurts business it hurts everybody number two you've got other people that you're touring with that are probably also doing the same thing that are not going to fuck with you either and of course like the higher ups the guys in the suits they want you to be quiet too. They want you to make music, they want you to put out records, and they want you to shut the fuck up. And when it's your livelihood on the line, there's very little incentive to come out about these things. I wanna make it perfectly clear, that does not excuse not coming out about these things. I just wanna really emphasize how difficult and challenging that is when you've kind of bought into this as your career, it's kind of all you can do at this point. And there's just so little benefit for coming out about these things. I mean, think about my Brian Stars video with D Fizzy. I mean, D Fizzy got blackballed and he was 100% in the right. I mean, he was one of the only good people in that situation and he got fucked over worse than anybody. And that's just some food for thought because, you know, watching interviews with issues before Tyler was kicked out, they didn't really seem to fuck with him that much. Maybe that's just me, but that's how I saw it. Tyler would respond the following day with what I can only describe as the most drawn out and dog shit response to allegations I've ever read. Grab a snack for this one, it's an experience to say the least. I want to set the record straight that over my decade as a musician, I have no doubt made mistakes. I have crossed boundaries in how I've talked to people. In the early days, I most definitely blurred lines and had trouble with understanding influence and power dynamics, something I was not aware existed and shamefully did not see or recognize until later into my career when I began to understand the responsibility of fame and leadership. I have never physically assaulted anyone in my life, but I can't deny that I have escalated conversations and abused my power, leaving people uncomfortable, and I will not run and hide from it. I had my inboxes open for people to come and flirt with no thought of repercussions, and I blurred lines when engaging with fans or strangers in conversation. I fucked up. I made myself accessible, and I did not discipline myself at all. For this, I'm gravely remorseful. For years I've been sorry. I'm not just sorry because it caught up to me, but there is never an inviting way to put yourself out when it comes to a part of the past and a part of yourself that you're trying to grow from and make sure to never see again. I have reached out in the past to people that I feel I may have hurt or affected by my antics, and out of pure compassion wanted to make sure that they knew I was fully aware of what I did wrong and could only hope that they would be able to find solace and move forward in life. I am not going to use that to deflect the fact that there are people who are valid in their emotions. I will always be sorry for my poor judgment, actions, and shortcomings as an influencer, and will continue to apologize to anyone who needs to hear it, no matter how often it's addressed. Though I never intended to be a quote-unquote bad guy, nor had vicious intentions, I was blind in that putting interest in someone younger than me is never okay. Through the years in my career, I've had to take many steps to recovery, from drugs, alcohol, and revisiting personal childhood trauma, repressed memories that led me to that point, and had to reflect on the mistakes I had made, and hurt I may have brought on to others as well. I've been in counseling and made my constant best efforts to get to the root of my problems and make honest strides in healing, growing, and accountability. My obliviously manipulative, narcissistic nature led me to mentally hurting someone that was family to me. I will be forever in shame and genuine heartbreak that I ever blurred lines between friendship, 
brotherhood, and mentorship. I say heartbreak because the person I am today and have known of myself for several years cannot fathom the stress and angst I may have caused. I have heard you. I have understood you. And I am sorry. I am sorry to my followers I have confused or let down with my actions. I have strived to be a leader and protect and provide both inclusivity and a safe space for all. Perhaps some of this came from an overcompensation to correct mistakes I had made in the past. I have always cherished your stories of pain, your connection to my lyrics, and the constant courage of pouring your soul at our feet to give us the great responsibility of being able to change the world. I have failed you all. I have let you down. No matter how great or small, I have disappointed and dishonored you. And I will never stop apologizing for that. Lastly, to my fiance, I'm sorry to have put you through this turmoil. I understand that in your position of being a positive influence to people, you couldn't just go without acknowledging my past. I don't want you to feel sorrow for having to do this to someone you love and cherish. So I understood and I'm taking accountability for my actions. I have of course since departed from issues, the legacy of our music, what it means to you all, and how it has guided and healed so many, that will never die, though I've tarnished my reputation. I will be taking time to continue the work towards personal growth. Infinitely, Tyler Carter. There's a lot of things wrong with this statement. I mean, just so many. Number one, Tyler Carter is just vomiting words. This is an insanely long statement and he's trying to make it seem like he's taking accountability, but I don't think you need that many words to just admit what you did was wrong and apologize. It seems like he's being reflective, so then people will be like, well, at least he understands, so we don't have to hold him accountable anymore. He also uses like so many excuses like rehab and drugs and childhood trauma, which I empathize with, but the problem is, is that not only are those not excuses, those aren't even like reasons. These things are completely unrelated. There are plenty of people who have childhood trauma and who go to rehab that don't do these things. He also pretty much just calls himself a moron where he's like, I didn't realize what I was doing was wrong, which is weird because we're talking about people who are 14, 15 years old. Even if you're a dumb 18 year old kid fresh in the scene, like, come on, you know what you're doing. And I don't even think Tyler would disagree that he should have and did know better. Tyler also says that he's reached out to and apologize to everyone that he's hurt, which is him pretty much confirming that it's a pattern of behavior, like he's just admitting that there's other people that just haven't came out. And he also says that he's been sorry for a very long time. Well, that's really interesting, Tyler, because I spoke to an individual that alleged lots of things towards you that said you never apologized, not only before the allegations, not only directly after the allegations, but still to this day, they haven't heard a fucking word from you. You may be wondering what they alleged. Well, let's find out. Okay, how did you know Tyler again? Like, what kind of relationship did you two have? I'm in a band called... I spent time with Tyler in the studio in the early 2010s as a 17-year-old getting started in the scene, and getting the opportunity to work with Tyler Carter was insanely important to me and was insanely helpful for my career. In a sense, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at without Tyler. Were there any red flags initially when working with him? He was noticeably unprofessional and a total diva to work with. He kept delaying the song. We eventually just had to put it out for free because he would never clear it. Did you ever notice Tyler acting like a deviant? You could say that. After we worked together, he quickly began sending unwanted sexual messages. It was difficult because I had to walk the line. He was my friend and was a super important connection to the industry but he was being a creep to me, and the thing is, I heard whisperings of the stuff from all over the industry, him doing that to other people that I'm not at liberty to name, but very big figures in the industry. He would send dudes unwanted messages like that? Not just messages, Tyler would get really drunk and start kissing people and grabbing people, and they'd be like, dude, stop, you're in a big band, you can't be doing this shit. Were there any instances in particular between you two that stand out? One night he had me come to a venue that he got me on the guest list for. He was being pretty pushy, but I made it clear that I wasn't into doing anything. But as soon as I got there, Tyler was like five feet away from me and he was texting me, telling me how good I looked and inviting me to go to his van with him. Did he think you were interested? Nope, I'm straight. It was hard to put my foot down. It was Tyler Carter. He honestly got off on converting straight dudes. It 
wasn't just me. I heard other people around that time telling me that he was doing the same shit. Did it ever go farther? Yes, but I, I don't want to get into it. I understand. Uh, I just want to confirm for clarity's sake. Would it be fair to say he victimized you? I don't like to think of myself as a victim, but yeah, that happened. I want to make it clear that while I can confirm that this person did know Tyler, like I promise, I know that for sure, and I can confirm a good chunk of the details in the story, I, I just can't confirm every single detail, especially once we start getting into very serious claims. But when I heard the story, it seems reasonable and coherent, it doesn't seem too dramatic, like I personally do believe this story. And I also do believe the public allegations, both that we talked about in this video and the ones that I just didn't bring up, uh, especially in tandem with the responses. Not just the response from Tyler himself, but even issues kicking him out before he even responded. They just immediately were done. I have been very confident about my statements in all of these videos. I would not make one of these videos if I did not believe that there was a good reason to make them. I have never felt more confident than this one, even more than the V1i video. There are certain small details that I really just can't get into. Uh, there are multiple anonymous people like that I am aware of, and I feel obligated to just maintain that anonymity for everyone's benefit. So I'm sorry if some things aren't super clear, but yeah. Thank you for watching, especially to my patrons. And a very special thanks to Skylar and Hime Evie. Congratulations, you have earned your forehead kisses. If you want a forehead kiss from me, you should sub to my Patreon. It would help me out a lot. You know, the subjects that I talk about, sometimes they're at risk for demonetization. And I'm trying to buy a house. I'm trying to get some cats. I'm trying to get some ferrets. All right, I'm just trying to live a simple life. I'm a simple guy, all right? I'm a silly, goofy guy. Also, check out my Twitter and Discord. I'll see you next week for episode six. It's a good one. See you guys.